to uh, Arlington Special Town Meeting, November 18th, it's 8 p.m. We're gonna get started. So I'm gonna call the meeting to order. I have a few brief remarks tonight. Um, last Monday, we got through a total of one and a half articles with 25 articles on the agenda or on the warrant. My calculations will be here for 18 nights if we keep up this blistering pace. Um, this is a special town meeting. Usually they don't go that long. We get rid of our uh, warrant under our regular town meeting, which averages about 70 to 80 articles in five, six, seven nights at the most. So I'm hoping we, we can do a little better tonight. Uh, I sent to all of you a um, primer on the motions, the parliamentary procedures, what those all are. Those are usually distributed with your uh, packets. We didn't get it in there, but you have it now. I also gave everyone a portion of town meeting time, our rules and regulations that we go by on the points of order and points of personal privileges. Um, during our debate the other night, we got pretty far off the mark what points of order and privilege are. So I thought I would give everybody an idea of what they actually are. Um, the last thing, we have one resolution this year, uh, Article 25. Uh, what I, as we've done in the past and as we're gonna do this time, I give each side one seven minute time to speak. So the proponents uh, will get together and put together their presentation and have seven minutes and they've already have put together a video which is on the online agenda on our webpage. And that runs about six and a half minutes. If someone else wants to discuss anything with the proponents, uh, get in touch with me and I'll put you in touch with them. Now the opponents or the people who are, don't wanna go forth with that art resolution. I've been in touch, I've been contacted by a few people. If anyone else wishes to be on the um, opposition to that please get in touch with me and I will put you together with the other folks who are want to put together an opposition. So just email me for the pro or con on 25. But again, we're going to have one presentation by each side and then we're going to vote on it. Okay. And that is about it for my remarks. Oh, I just wanted to remind everybody if you're having a voting issue and you're not able to use uh, the voting uh, portal, or you're not able to use the raise hand feature in Zoom, you can call Julie Brazil and report your vote to her. And she will report it to us and we'll have Mr. Kowalski will manually enter it for you. And I'm going to repeat her number for everybody to write down 781-316-2242. That's 781-316. 3071. And we've made some adjustments to how we're going to handle anyone who is on tech support. While we get a vote, we're going to try and get your vote and have that recorded as well. Oh, Julie's telling me I wrote, oh no, that's her, her number. Is chat still on for just the presenters? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, John, I was just providing that because that's to all the attendees to see Julie's phone number that you just gave. Oh, okay. So that that chat is just gave you her phone numbers. So if you are on tech support, we're going to um, get try and get in touch with the tech support person so you can register your vote. We did that successfully between Chris and um, Patrick the other night. We're going to keep it up tonight. All right. So let's get going with our um, Agenda, so any town meeting members left to be sworn in. If so, please use the um, request to speak button, which we have had renamed because I kept calling it request to speak and it used to be asked to speak, but now it's the right name. So if you haven't been sworn in, go ahead and um, use the request to speak button now. We'll give you half a second to get that up. I don't think there is anyone who has it. it Navigate to your portal and give that a shot. So I'm not seeing any on my screen because I think everyone's sworn in. So I recognize Mr. Hurd. 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> it is moved that if all the business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the special town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Monday, November 23rd, 2020 at 8 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Foskett, would you like to uh, second that? Second. Okay. I'm going to direct the uh, clerk to enter one vote in favor of that motion. Are there any announcements or resolutions? If anyone has an announcement or resolution, um, please use the raise request to speak feature. Okay, I'm not seeing any. Okay. Um, if does anyone have any reports that they have to receive that they would like us to receive. Any committees have reports. I'm gonna call for any reports of committees. So again, use your request to speak, but if you have a report you want us to receive. Mr. Moderator? Yes. A point of technical support. Uh, we're still in the attendance vote, so I don't oh. know if anyone has the request to speak button up right now. Oh, okay. So um, we what I'm gonna do is it. ask everybody to, and I'm not seeing any of that on my portal screen. I'm just seeing article five from last the other night. Um, if you haven't attend, used the attendance vote, please go in and check in the attendance vote and check in attendance. That's our quorum call. This is usually our test question. So I'm gonna ask for everybody to go ahead and do that now. And if you're having an issue, um, the raised hand feature should be up, Ms. Wayman. So Adam, can you see how many people have voted? We have 223. Okay. Mr. Moderator, we do have two points of order. Well, they're gonna, um, I think I might have to log out of the portal and log back in. Okay. Um, Cause it's not functioning properly. I can't see any of those points of order. Who are they, Miss, I may ask? Sure, um, we have got John Warden, Paulette Schwartz and Sherry Barron. Okay, so um, I'll take Mr. Uh, Warden first. Okay. Okay. Mr. Warden, you can unmute yourself. And remember everyone, uh, name and precinct when you first unmute yourself and you don't have to ask if we can hear you. Is that, am I unmuted? Yes, you are, sir. Thank you. Uh, the question is, um, Last Monday, uh, I was able to go from the portal to the Zoom by hitting the Chrome button. That doesn't seem to be working tonight. So maybe you could tell everybody, maybe everybody else, the other 219 people know, but I don't. How, how do you move between the two, the, the two platforms? Um, we're going to have uh, Pat Libby give you a call, John, and he's going to help walk you through that. That's beyond my capacity. So Patrick, can you get John a call? And any technical issues like Mr. Warden just had, um, so our should be addressed through the Q&A at this point. Make is that? Uh, well, Pat's going to help you, John. Where's the q and I don't see that. Right down there at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Right on the Zoom screen. Let's see. Oh, I'm on, maybe, I don't know what I'm on. Bottom of the Zoom screen. So Patrick's giving you a call, John. So we're going to go to the next point of order, if you will. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Paulette Schwartz. Um, that was an error. Okay. There's an ability to lower your hand once you put it up. 
So Sherry Barron. Hi, Sherry Barron, Precinct 7. Yes, Ms. Barron. I don't know if this is a point of order, but I wanted to clarify. You said about Article 25 that each side would give a seven minute presentation. Will there be appropriate time for uh, input from the town meeting members? What we've done in the past is we have had each side give us their presentation and then we've gone to a vote. And that is what you plan to do this time. I'm gonna follow the same pattern that I've done in the past, yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Ms. Barron. I think there's a... Uh... Portal's not working right. I gotta totally log out and log back in. But in the meantime, um, if there anyone has reports, please um, give us a word right now. Otherwise, we're gonna move on. Oh, we have to wait for this to finish. Two hundred thirty-four. Do can we? Do we know how many are on the um, your Zoom, Miss Wayman? Yeah, we have two hundred forty-three uh, attendees with. A small handful, maybe uh, one, two, maybe five or six of them are not town, not town meeting members. Okay, so we have about uh, 43 of about three town meeting members who have not yet voted. I'm going to give you another minute to do your check in. And then we're going to proceed. Time. I'm going to try and log back in. Ah, I think that did it. So I have four missing votes Joanne Preston, John Ellis, Elaine Crowder, and Adele Kraus. If you four folks want to check in, Adele has been gone for 18 minutes, but Joanne and John. Please vote now. We're going to give you another 15 seconds and we're going to figure a check-in is done. Okay, so we're down to Joanne Preston. Joanne got herself a new uh, high-speed internet router over the weekend, so she should be good to go. And she's voted. Okay, so let's close that voting. Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. Yep. Uh, Julie Brazil's raising her hand. Okay. Hi, uh, Mr. Moderator. Adele Kraus just called me. Um, she is still trying to get help. Um, so okay. if someone can call her, she wasn't able to do anything. All right, we all, um, we'll check her in. Mr. Kraus, you will add her in as a um, here. And um, Patrick, could you call it Adele Kraus? Oh, you just got off the phone with John, so I should have given it to Chris. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, Mr. Yeah. Warden needs to explain to us what his phone number is that is not public knowledge. Oh. Uh, huh. I can give him your phone number. John Warden, if you're still out there, if you would call 781 three one six three four five nine John so call seven eight one three one six three four five nine and that will bring you to Chris Chris Pickett right to his desk I will say it one more time John hopefully you're here seven eight one three one six three four five nine. Let's hope John gives you a call. I don't have John's phone number unless John wants to pop back in and give us his phone number. Okay, so um, now, oh, Mr. Weinstein has a point of order. We haven't even started yet. 
Yeah, hi. Hi, uh, Jordan. Hi, uh, Mr. Moderator. I just wanted to ask whether or not it would be possible to appeal um, either formally or to your uh, sense of fairness, uh, your ruling that there would be no discussion beyond the seven minutes allowed for each uh, article. That's no. Proponent. Um, because no. it's a very important question. Mr. Mr. Weinstein, Mr. Weinstein, um, that's first. That's not a point of order. Uh, there is no the all rules of decorum and all rules of how the meeting votes are strictly the moderator's dis determination, unless they're set out in the bylaws. Um, and the mo moderator is in charge of the um, the um, happening of the meeting, how how it progresses. This is a rule that we have used in the past for at least three or four years and maybe more. And it's a rule that I'm going to stick with this year. Um, and frankly, this is, it's an issue that I'm not going to get into right now, but I've made my decision. I've announced it. It's been out there in the public for weeks now. I'm just making sure that everyone understands, but thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, assuming there's no more reports or to be received, we're gonna go right into um, Article 5. So if Mr. Um, Kowalski, if you wanna bring Article 5 back up. And Mr. Moderator, I will be restoring uh, the session from Article 5, and it should include the same speaking queue that we had up the other night when we- Correct. Came. We'll just go right back to the same queue. I think the two points of order were dealt with, though. All right. Um, would you like me to clear them out? Yes, please. I believe we did deal with both of them. And when done with that, we're going to call Karen Kelleher. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Am I okay to proceed? Yes. Karen Kelleher, Precinct 5. Thank you. Uh, I rise in favor of Article 5, the fossil fuel ban for new construction and substantial rehab, and I'd like to speak to it from the perspective of the affordable housing sector. I'm the executive director of an organization called Risk Boston. We provide financial policy and other kinds of support for affordable housing, as well as economic development, small business, and other aspects of community development. In that capacity, my organization has been providing policy support at the intersection of affordable housing and energy efficiency and climate resiliency for up to 10 years, almost 10 years now. Um, and in that, uh, at that intersection, we are very focused on driving both, um, you know, reduction of um, fossil fuel use, but also controlling cost. Because when we're advocating for measures that reduce the carbon footprint of a building, if they are increasing the cost, they may be actually reducing the affordability of that project, reducing the numbers of units or reducing the uh, um, income level or increasing the income levels. So we try very hard to make sure that we're not pulling um, between those two objectives, but doing things that are moving both of them forward. So I wanna to speak to this article and what I like about it from that perspective, um, my organization has been very supportive of this type of ban in Brookline and in other communities in Massachusetts because of some of the features of these bans that really make it a feasible, viable uh, thing to push forward in both affordable housing and other multifamily housing. Um, so there are two primary things I like about this ban. Um, first is that it focuses on electric HVAC systems. And that's a place where the market offers electric options that are cost effective. Uh, I couldn't say the same thing if this was a, uh, requiring hot water heaters to not rely on fossil fuels or emergency backup generators because the market hasn't produced those options yet. Um, but in the HVAC space, there are viable cost-effective electric options. The second thing I like about this um, is that it has waiver authority if there were to be financial feasibility issues as a result of this um, imposition. 
And so there is a particular call out for affordable housing in that waiver authority. So should folks be concerned that this is imposing a cost on affordable housing that it can't bear, that's gonna reduce its affordability. I think there's plenty of, um, of track record to show that that's not the case. And the last point I'll make is that that's being demonstrated right here in Arlington by the Housing Corporation of Arlington. I think it was pointed out on Monday night that they are currently constructing two different projects that are relying on all electric HVAC systems in their affordable housing. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Ms. Kelleher. Next will be Roderick Holland. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Roderick Holland, Precinct 7. Um, brief comment uh, on this article. Uh, I like it a lot because it gives us something for the gut rehabs and teardowns that otherwise are ca causing havoc. Uh, at least we get better greenhouse gas emissions out of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gordon Jameson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. Um, in preparation for speaking tonight, I looked at the video again. Um, I think the article is positive. I'm positive on the article in general and well-crafted. Um, I have a question about what Ms. Keller just said, and then I have a couple more. Um, she mentioned that it only applied to HVAC and not hot water. Could that be clarified by someone? Uh, Mr. Meeks? Um, yes. So I think uh, it, it does apply to, it applies to fossil fuel piping. And so fossil fuel and piping, of course, would affect a hot water heater. So it does apply. I think she was referring specifically to the exemption for hot water in large buildings, buildings over 10,000 square feet. And that's okay. really where the technology does not exist. Thank you, Mr. Meeks. Um, the history of uh, this type of article goes to Brookline. Um, and uh, was that put, Mr. Meeks, was that put through the moderator, Mr. Meeks, was that a bylaw that passed town meeting? How was that passed initially? Mr. Meeks, do you answer that? Or Mr. Hine, actually Mr. Hine might be the better person. I, I believe it was passed by a bylaw in Brookline, but uh, Mr. Hine. Mr. Chairman, I, this is Pat Hanlon, uh, Precinct 5. You and can't just break in unless I call oh, on you, sorry. sir. He was, he was left on. I know. I, but, but you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Hanlon, Mr. you can't Moderator, just break I in unless I call you. on you. I did address to you. I, that, Pat, you can't break in unless I call on you. I, I'm the moderator. Gordon asked a question. I call on Mr. Heim to answer his question. Reclaiming we, my time. Isn't, <laughs> Gordon, go ahead. Mr. I, 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 so um, I, Mr. Heim, is, is this a, a bylaw that was passed by Brookline? Mr. Heim? Douglas Heim, town council. Good evening, members of town meeting. Yes, the bylaw was passed by Brookline town meeting. The bylaw that Brookline town meeting passed was later uh, rejected by the municipal law unit of the attorney general's office. And I'd be happy to elaborate on that if folks would like. Um, I know that Mr. Meeks and Mr. Hamlin are also aware of those details, but I don't want to take up all your time, Mr. Jamerson. So the answer to that is yes, it was passed by town, uh, a, town by, a town meeting bylaw. Thank you. So um, am I correct, Mr. Heim, that bylaws usually require a two thirds vote? Mr. Heim? No, uh, Douglas Heim, town council. So zoning bylaws require a two thirds vote. An amendment to the general bylaws require a majority vote. Uh, unless Mr. Leone is correct me on that uh, score, I believe that a general bylaw only True. requires a majority vote. This is not a zoning bylaw. No, sir. Why is it not? Why is it not a zoning bylaw? I'll defer to Mr. Heim on that. So, uh, Douglas Heim, Town Council. There's a couple of ways this particular uh, we could have approached this, but. This is largely not the uh, exclusive to the province of zoning. We have a lot of other regulations that speak to um, certain uh, facets of private property regulation, including uh, buildings. I believe that this is proposed 
to be entered in under um, Title VI of the town bylaws, which does regulate um, certain aspects of buildings and makes reference to the state building code. So it, it does fit in there. I'd be happy to, I don't want to take again more of Mr. Jamison's time than necessary, but I'd be happy to talk more generally about the legal posture for any town meeting members who would like to know more and why and how we're planning to uh, approach the issue of uh, the Attorney General's office's uh, decision relative to Brookline's plan. I think I, I think, thank you, Mr. Heim. I think I understand the Attorney General's position. I did, I looked at the um, the video and that's explained that. I just was confused that that this, um, to my mind, is a zoning bylaw. But um, I guess in this context, it's not. Because if it was a zoning bylaw, then this would be a way to work around to get a majority position versus two thirds. But I, I trust your your uh, knowledge, Mr. Heim. On other things, I was um, happy to see on page seven for those of who are following along on the paper copy we were sent that there's a difference between um, you need 75% of the existing uh, space to be changed for residential and a slightly lower for um, commercial. Um, it says added space. So in other words, a question for perhaps for Mr. Meeks or Mr. Hanlon, mm -hmm. um, if I added, if I doubled the size of my house, I wouldn't have to do this. Is that correct? Mr. Hanlon, now, now you can speak. That is, the, that is correct. The Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Um, Continuing on thinking about towards the future when we're doing all doing this, um, I'm sure many of the proponents are against pipelines for natural gas. Um, I myself was against the Northern, um, Northern Pass, which would have brought, uh, for aesthetic reasons of the White Mountains, it would have brought uh, hydropower down from Canada. I'm concerned long-term about our um, supply here. Um, Mr. Uh, speaking quickly to Mr. Twemley's comments at the end of his speech, uh, I'm curious how much of this is already in progress. Um, if the director of inspections is online, could he report how many um, splits have been installed or permitted in the last 12 to 24 months? It's Mr. Um, Byrne present. Can we bring Michael up if he is? Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, good, good evening, Michael Byrne, Boosie 13, Inspector of uh, Inspectoral Services. Um, good. Now, we, we've not kept track um, of how many of these have been done, but I know that there has not been a lot of them so far. Okay. But, Thank you, Mr. Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Trying Byrne. To get, just trying to get how, 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 how far this was being adopted um, already on itself. So it sounds like we need to have a little nudge here. So. Um, I'm, I'm moving towards being in favor of this, learning about the bylaw, you know, bylaw and, and that. And I want to remind people very quickly that um, whether or not you need to have a split or something, the town has a way, and if you don't have solar on your house, the town has a way for your uh, electricity usage to tomorrow, essentially, be 100% green. And that's the Arlington Community Electric thing. You can op opt up to the 100%. So I want to put a pitch in for that. And so uh, while I, I admit I was in these initially uh, skeptical, I will be voting for this. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Jamison. Uh, Mr. Joshua Lobel. Hi there, Josh Lobel, Precinct 8. Um, I also am in favor of this article for many reasons. <clears throat> One is I think that we probably all can agree on the fact that climate change is real and that we have a limited opportunity to address uh, or mitigate all those problems. So one question we heard in our precinct meeting was why should Arlington take this up? It seems like a much bigger issue. Um, and I would agree it is a much bigger issue and probably we, it would be ideal if we had federal and state leadership on this, but we don't. <clears throat> and so Many towns and cities around the country are doing this. San Francisco just did the same thing with even a little bit more severe uh, impact because they also don't allow gas for cooking. Um, there are, I guess, about 39 or 40 places around the country, country that have done it. Um, so I think that, and unlike kind of just a symbolic move on our, our part, it also represents real opportunity because we're preventing building uh, structures and, and systems that are, will be obsolete and have to be changed. So that just kind of makes sense. 
Um, it's been mentioned several times that Brookline did pass this or similar uh, article at their non-virtual town meeting. And originally, I think it had a fair amount of skepticism, but it ended up passing by a, a vote of 207 to three with their conversation there. So I think that again, at least at their town meeting, people felt fairly convinced by all the discussion. Um, the other thing is that by doing this, we're not really um, trying to force an industry so much. The, mar the technology is there already. It's improving all the time. And by putting in the, the kind of the core infrastructure to utilize this kind of technology, um, we can take advantage of it. Whereas if we don't do this and you build your house with um, a system that's not compatible with a heat pump, then it does totally, it would have to be uh, replaced in order for us to do what we have to do by 2050. So I, again, I'm, I'm very supportive of this. I'm glad that Arlington is taking a leadership on it and I appreciate all the people who've put in the effort to get this on our agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lobel. Um, Mr. John Deist. Yeah, there I go. Okay. Um, John, you have to turn off Mary's right, yeah. speaker. Oh, right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, John. Oh, much better. Thank you. Um, I'm also strongly in favor of this. This is the great impending disaster for the entire world. And we, uh, our participation this way is a really good idea. So I'm strongly for this. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Christian Klein. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Christian Klein, Precinct 10. Um, I'm a practicing architect in the Boston area. Um, the mechanical engineers who design the mechanical um, systems for the interior spaces we design um, switched about three years ago to go all going to air source um, heat pumps specifically for this reason, that any new infrastructure that's installed today, especially in the commercial side, which is not necessarily applicable to, to the bylaw we have in front of us, but everything will be most likely in place 30 years from now. And so if we are looking to reduce our emissions by 2050, we have to do it today. We can't do it 30 years down the road. So um, I am very strongly in favor of this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Um, Mr. John Warden. Mr. Warden, you can unmute yourself. Go ahead and talk, John. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Again. Oh, thank you. I couldn't find the unmute button. Uh, I, I, I did it for you. Oh, oh, oh good. That's why I couldn't find it. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, John Warden, Precinct 8. I also, like previous speakers, am strongly in favor of this. And I was particularly moved by Mr. Tulio's comments <clears throat> uh, Monday night uh, about the, the legacy we're leaving and, and what will your what will you tell your children and grandchildren when they ask you what you did about climate change uh, in 2020? Well, in my case, it'd probably be great-grandchildren. My children have been involved in trying to deal with climate change uh, for a long time. But <clears throat> I, um, uh, I, the, uh, the uh, le legislative process, I mean, we're gonna send this Hopefully we pass this uh, by a large majority. We will send it to the legislature and there it goes into kind of down the rabbit hole. <clears throat> and you can be sure that the, the gas industry, the oil companies and the, and the development world. Sorry. <laughs> and the, the developers will have the best 
the best lobbyist money can buy. And if, if you've ever dealt with <coughs> the legislature, you know that the lobbyists have a much better way of getting the ear of our legislators than we ordinary citizens do. <coughs> but it is important for us at this point, I believe, to, and I'll uh, bring this all together, uh, to do whatever we can on the local level uh, to show that we are really serious about this climate change issue, which is so really an existential challenge to our society. And <clears throat> I just mentioned briefly uh, three things that we can do ourselves without any help from the legislature. One is stop the war on trees. Uh, the, the, the central administration of our town on half- well, John, let's, we're talking about fossil fuel right now. Let's keep it within scope. Well, I've tied this together, Mr. Moderator. Okay. Because um, uh, um, the, the, the whole co concept is, say, is eliminating the additional use of fossil fuel. And part of that, if we stop cutting down all those trees, they wouldn't use those gas chainsaws uh, to, to uh, cut them down. And so, but, but the, Mr. Meeks in, in an earlier presentation that I heard talked about the importance of trees. That's also a part of climate control, which is really what we're dealing with. I mean, climate uh, change and the trees are putting out oxygen and stuff that, that, that helps us avert that. And so removing them is inimical. It's, it's, part, of the same, it's part of the same thing as eliminating fossil fuel, uh, get, getting, saving our tree canopy. The second is the pterodon ep epidemic, um, which again is uh, those aren't those aren't electric backhoes that are destroying those little affordable houses, and 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 carrying them off to the dump, and all the materials and so on, good wood that you can't even buy anymore is being destroyed to put up new buildings made of, of made of the same thing as makes fossil fuel, oil, <clears throat> uh, and and finally. Um, and this, uh, this is a very important point. The biggest and most expensive project ever undertaken in 385 years in this town has been the new high school. And one of the, one of the undertakings that was given to us at town meeting and was given to the voters, the new high school be, would be heated and cooled by ge geothermal. So it would not use fossil fuel except for cooking. Um, and, and then but af after the, those votes were obtained, and the thing was approved, they said, well, we're gonna not, can't do the geothermal. And, and I think that is a serious mistake that has to be reversed. Uh, that, and that's it's, it's a little been, bit out of scope there, John. Let's bring it back to the article. I'm trying to get rid of the fossil fuel going into the high school. I know, but, that, but we're, we're not gonna solve the problems of the high school architecture no. issues tonight. We're talking about fossil fuel. The, I, the reason I bring that up, Mr. Moderator, you please, is that when we go to the legislature, we, 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 we want to say we have done everything we can on the local level to, to combat climate change, climate change in, in our town and to be an example for the rest of the state. And if they say, well, what about the high school that you, that you use good old natural gas with, uh, our, with our leaky pipes? Uh, you, you didn't change that, did you? Well, you look a little bit hypocritical. I don't want them to be able to say that about us. That's not the kind of people we are. Let's do it right. Let's pass this, pass this, this, this warrant article, uh, send it to the legislature, and let's go in there with a clean slate and say we've done everything we can, trees, teardowns, high school, to, to at our level, to do our part for climate, to prevent climate, uh, mitigate climate change. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sophie Magliazzo. Yes, good evening. So familiar, so precinct eight. Um, I am clearly in the minority here, but I rise in opposition to Article 5. Although I'm all in favor of clean heat, um, unless we're all moving to clean heat, I find it fundamentally unfair that an owner of a new home will pay the same property taxes we all pay, but be prevented from choosing how to heat their home, same as we have that choice. If we want to make a move to clean heat, it needs to be done, I believe, more at the state level so that it applies across the entire state to make a difference. And if we ignore the unfairness that I find, 
My additional concern with this article is the waiver provision. I believe it's going to swallow the article um, in what we're looking to do. So I think that basically with this waiver position, uh, provision, the clean heat desire is just gonna be wishful thinking. So I would be in favor of an article for clean heat like this if it were more limited to commercial and non-owner occupied housing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Magliazzo. Um, Liebe Haim. Liba Hayam, Precinct 11. I move the question in all matters forward. Okay, very, thank you very much, Ms. Hayam. We have a motion to terminate debate. That's not debatable. So let's um, get a voting screen up to terminate debate. Second, Mr. Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Foskett. So town meeting members, we have a motion to terminate debate on Article 5, and a second voting will be enabled. At that point in time, you will navigate over to your voting portal. You hit refresh page or refresh screen, and that should bring up your voting A, one for yes, two for no, and three for abstain, and then hit cast your vote. Now remember, we only count yes and no votes. Uh, Ms. Wayman has raised the raised hand function on Zoom if you're having a voting issue. And if all else fails, please call um, Town Clerk Brazil at 781-316-3071. Um, and it looks like we don't have anybody in tech support right now, so we're not gonna run into any issues right there. So go ahead and cast your vote. So we seem to be picking up the speed of voting. Everyone's kind of fallen into a good pattern. Uh, maybe it's not gonna take two minutes each time because right now we've already had 221 people voting and only 25 outstanding. Um, and Ms. Krause may still be experiencing issues. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Julie Brazil has her hand raised. Okay. We can assume when um, Julie raises her hand during voting that you can <laughs> just bring her up and um, activate her. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, Adele Kraus, Precinct 6, votes yes. To terminate debate. Very good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, we have 10 missing voters. Um, and I'm told Mr. McCabe has logged off. Um, so he's not in a queue anymore. So we have eight voters. Let's give them 15 seconds. Michael Brown, Patricia Costa, Annie LaCourt, Karen Kelleher, Robert Marlin, Sylvia Domin Dominguez, Leonard Carden, Out of those six people can go ahead and vote. We're going to give you 10 seconds. I'm going to start my stopwatch because I don't have my nifty little clock. And five, three, two, one. Okay, let's close voting. Motion to terminate debate, it's two thirds. It passes 88%. We have 212 in the affirmative. 29 in the negative debate is terminated. That brings us to the vote on the main article. So once we run through the screens, um, I'm gonna also assume that everybody has figured out where their name is and that they can find their name on their screen the first pass. If that's not the case, um, let me know. Okay. 
Okay, we're now going to take a vote on the main article on Article 5, Home Rule Legislation, Fossil Fuel Infrastructure. If you want to pass the bylaw and send it off to the legislature as a home rule, please vote yes once Mr. Karolski has finished his clicking. There we go. So your voting portal should be open at this point. Navigate back to the portal. Hit refresh if you need to. Vote one for yes, two for no, three to abstain, and then cast your vote. If you're having an issue, the raised hands feature will be opened. And Mr. Krowski, I'm going to um, enter verbally entered votes for uh, Ms. Marie Kapelka. Ms. Kapelka votes no. And just to John Leonard. Mr. Leonard is voting yes. Mr. Moderator? Yes. We've got two hands raised. Okay. Adele Krauss and Janice Weber. Okay, let's take Adele. Yes. Ms. Krauss votes yes. Okay. So Adam, can we enter a, a verbal vote from Ms. Krauss and Ms. Weber? Mr. Moderator, um, could you uh, please say the uh, votes at the end of each um, article, if it's not too much trouble? Uh, yeah, declare what the vote is. Yes, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That wasn't a voting issue, but I will do that. Uh, Beth Ann Friedman has her hand up. There's a problem with my voting screen. I vote yes, but it's just thinking, thinking, thinking. So I, I think I have to reboot. Okay. The, um, yeah, with your permission, we'll enter, enter your vote as a yes vote. Thank you, Mr. Thank Moore. you. Um, does Mr. Lobel have a point of order? And then Mr. Weinstein after Mr. Lobel. Hi, this is Josh Lobel, Precinct 8. Just very briefly, <clears throat> um, I know that uh, many people have to resort to the verbal vote, um, but I think it gives them undue influence in a way when you announce it when the rest of our votes are not displayed. So I don't know if there's a, a way around that, but just something to consider. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, so I'll, I'll try and wait to the very end of the vote before I do it and then announce the two that I have. The others, I'm not sure what else we can do. We'll try that. Thank you. And Mr. Weinstein has his hand up. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jordan Weinstein, Precinct 21. I'm just reporting on behalf of Sylvia Dominguez, a town meeting member, that she's not been able to vote uh, using the uh, portal um, and doesn't seem to be able to raise her own hand. So. Um, if Ms. Dominguez could call the tech support people. Yep. Um, she can get their phone numbers on the get help button. Yep. Mr. Moderator, I just, yes, spoke, with, uh, I just spoke with uh, Sylvia and she is also. Okay, is she, you think, is she able to vote? Yes. Okay, so we'll give Sylvia a moment to, to vote because she still hasn't voted yet. So Sylvia, if you can go ahead and vote, then we're gonna, um, Ann Fitzgerald, Michael Brown, Sylvia and have not voted. So we'll wait, give those three folks a second. Mr. Moderator, Julie Brazil has her hand raised. Okay, Ms. Brazil. Julie Brazil, town clerk. 
I do have a vote for Ms. Fitzgerald whenever you're ready. We'll take her vote because I'm about to close voting. All right. Uh, Ann Fitzgerald, Precinct 17, votes yes. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Moderator, Phil has a point of order. Phil Goff. Okay. Mr. Goff, what's your point of order? And Sylvia has now voted. So Mr. Goth, what's your point of order? Uh, Phil Goff, Precinct 7. Uh, I'm just wondering, Mr. Moderator, for the sake of time, and I know this may not be the most popular suggestion, but for the sake of time, would it make sense for us to record the votes of those who are able to vote? And if the vote is close, we then take the time to go through and do all the verbal votes? Well, we wouldn't. If we, something passes by 90%. Is it really worth all the time we're taking to make sure everyone, well, as important as it is, to register if, each vote? If Thank you. We are going to, we have to take everyone's vote before we close voting because once we close voting, we can't go back in and manipulate the database and if they want to get their vote in. So I, I don't think it really takes that much time, but I understand your point. Um, we'll see how it progresses with the meeting. So let's close voting at this point. The motion carries by 93%. We have 225 in the affirmative, eight in the negative. And it's a vote and I so declare it. That ends article five. That will bring us to article six. Good, thank you, sir. That's gonna open up Article 6. Um, Mr. Hurd, do you have anything to say about Article 6? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Hurd, Select Board Chair. Mr. Moderator, this is an article submitted by Jordan Weinstein and 10 registered voters as amended by the Select Board to create a study committee to evaluate the creation of a civilian police advisory board or other alternative civilian-based mechanism to address complaints about police interactions in Arlington. The select board urges town meeting to adopt this article as comprised in the select board report. The select board voted in favor of positive action 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. Um, and we have two amendments. Um, is Ms. Kelleher, Krista Kelleher with us? Does she want to present her amendment? Ms. Kelleher? Thank you. Mr. Moderator, Krista Kelleher, Precinct 5. I offer this amendment to ensure that the study committee is constituted in a way that both draws on the expertise of town employees serving in key leadership roles and maintains the integrity and effectiveness of the committee. First, I'd like to thank select board members for their thoughtful deliberation on the article, the improvements they proposed in terms of composition, charge, and timeline, and their overall support of the establishment of this study committee. It is essential to have the police chief or their designee and the diversity, equity, and inclusion director or designee serve on the study committee as the input of such leaders will be invaluable. Their participation is critical for a successful process to consider what, if any, type of civilian advisory or review board might best serve all of the residents of Arlington. Their expertise and insights will allow for a more informed discussion because these individuals have unique vantage points. So why should they assume non-voting status on the study committee if they are so vital to its effectiveness? 
Three reasons. One, affording them ex officio non-voting status allows them to freely offer perspectives and ideas without placing them in a position where they might perceive or experience pressure in regard to decision making. It offers them a level of protection so that they are not placed in a vulnerable position should they feel uncertain or conflicted about any issues or recommendations. It also allows them to offer their expertise without any questions or concerns about their autonomy or allegiances. Second reason, it could provide other members of the study committee a sense of comfort and perhaps even assurance that they can participate, raise questions, and weigh in on recommendations and decisions in a free and open manner. It may, as a result, allow them to deliberate and vote without a concern about how their stance might be in alignment with or different from that of these town leaders. Finally, third reason I'm offering, it increases the likelihood that the study committee's process, activities, and recommendations will be accepted by the community at large without raising questions or citing concerns about how recommendations were made and by whom or under what conditions. So I kindly ask my fellow town meeting members tonight to act favorably on this amendment by adopting it. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Foskett. Second. Thank you, sir. The second amendment we have is Miss Elizabeth Trey. Let's bring Miss Trey forward. Miss Trey. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, Elizabeth Dre, Precinct 8. Mr. Moderator, before I present my amendment, with your permission, I'd like to make a request to strike two words from this amendment. I don't know if this is possible. Yes, it hasn't been submitted yet and seconded, so it's still... Ah, <laughs> fantastic. Um, would you like me to explain the words I would like stricken or how should yes, I... Yes, let's get rid of the words you don't want so we know what you're talking about. Okay, so... Um, the um it says following the words i'm sorry um the last paragraph of what is on the screen currently it asks for a representative with prosecutorial or legal defense experience i'd like to strike the words prosecut prosecutorial or please okay so you wanted to read and to include at least one representative with legal defense experience yes please okay thank you sir Okay, uh, with legal offense. Okay, so leaving the word with and getting rid of. All right, so town meeting members, please uh, go to Ms. Dre's amendment and strike out those words in her last paragraph uh, with pros uh, prosecutorial or. So it would read one representative with legal defense, et cetera. Right, Thank go you, ahead, Ms. Dre. Thank you. Uh, I present this amendment to my fellow town meeting members for their consideration and support. This amendment makes three small changes to what the select board has proposed. Number one, my amendment moves the appointment of the Citizens Police Academy graduate to the purview of the town's diversity, equity, inclusion, or DEI director or their designee. And my rationale is as follows. The DEI director is responsible for coordinating and supporting the work of the Human Rights Commission, the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission and the Disability Commission. She is also a core racial equity team member and in her role, she promotes healthier communities, advances racial equity and fosters community engagement. These roles and her expertise make her uniquely positioned to understand the needs and concerns of, rev of residents who, as a group in general, tend to have more frequent interaction with the police department. The DEI director can use her expertise and the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion to best select a Citizens Police Academy graduate who will be most effective in this study group. Due to the different natures of their jobs, I believe that this is a different lens than the police chief would use in choosing the representative. This matters because it is imperative that if the study group ultimately recommends a police civilian re review board to town meeting, it will need to be structured in such a way that the most marginalized groups in our community, the groups who are most likely to interact with the police department, trust it and use it. A graduate of the Citizen Police Academy who has both an understanding of the need for this trust, 
as well as an understanding of the Arlington Police Department will be crucial in building such a board and achieving, achieving this goal. My second change to the amendment is requires that this study group include and include at least one individual with, with legal defense experience regarding police arrests or detainment, especially with regard to disadvantaged populations. This language was added as feedback from several town meeting members who suggested that for efficacy and effectiveness, I'm sorry, efficiency and effectiveness, at least one representative should have practical and professional legal knowledge and experience in the area that this committee will be charged with studying. And my final change to this amendment replaces shall be encouraged to designate representatives who reflect racial, ethnic, and other forms of diversity to be found in Arlington to shall designate representatives. While I realize that there is no likely enforceable effect between shall and shall be encouraged to, I think that it is important to the long-term success of this study group to return to the stronger language found in the original article as proposed by Mr. Weinstein in March. I understand that this may make it a little more difficult and there will need to be more communication between the appointing authorities to achieve this goal. However, I believe this increased effort will ultimately be worth it. And should a civilian review board ultimately be recommended, it will increase the likelihood that those who need it the most will trust it and use it because it was created by such a diverse and independent group of residents. Thank you, town meeting members. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Ms. Dre. Um, Timur Yontar. Second. Second. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, Foskett. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Timur Yontar, Precinct 7. Uh, tonight with dinner, I had a fortune cookie which offered these words of wisdom for town meeting. Get to the point and keep it clear and simple. So this is a vote about a study committee. And in all my years, I have never heard nor seen nor smelled an issue that was so dangerous it couldn't be talked about. So yes, I'm for studying anything. I will vote yes on this article. And I also find the two amendments to be reasonable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yontar. Uh, Mr. Trembley, Ed Trembley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ed Trembley, Precinct 19. I'm just curious where the, uh, I think I've heard that the police chief has uh, some sort of a uh, review board in the works. And I'm just curious, uh, how where in the process that is and uh, what it's made of. Uh, Chief, uh, Chief Flaherty with us. Yes, I am. Can you um, enlighten Mr. Trembley, ma'am? Good evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator and Mr. Trembley. Julie Flaherty, Chief of Police. So uh, I'd like to start off by saying that for the record that I am not opposed to civilian oversight. I fully support Governor Baker's police um, reform bill. Police chiefs for years and years have been advocating um, that the Commonwealth needs police certification. Um, and the governor's bill calls for a post system a police officers standard and training system, including um, civilian oversight. Um, and that would be um, a committee that would review all complaints received against all police officers, including Arlington officers. Um, so I understand and I, um, I understand the perception and I understand the community's desire for reform. Um, but I, I think our Article 6 is the wrong approach for Arlington. I support police reform and I also support the profession of policing. Um, our police department has been one of the most progressive and transparent police departments, not only in Massachusetts, but in the country. Our programs and methods have been copied across the nation um, from our jail diversion program, which I'm very proud to, um, to announce that our program just celebrated uh, the 10th anniversary this past month um, of success to our approach with the opioid, opioid epidemic, which has been um, recognized nationally. We're a model police department and um, nationwide police departments come to us to learn about our behavioral health programs. So I, would, so I would say that we should look at trends and we should look at data. 
Um, the Arlington Police Department has not had an excessive force complaint in over 10 years. So that means that nobody has um, complained about a police officer in Arlington using excessive force for 10 years. We've had thousands and thousands of interactions um, with community members. We've received very few citizen complaints and we have a system in place for receiving complaints and for investigating them as well. Um, we are an accredited police department. We're accredited by the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission. This past month, we just went through our assessment and received our third accreditation. Um, we've been accredited since 2008. And what that means is that um, it's a voluntary, very time consuming process that ensures our policies and our procedures are in line with 21st century policing standards. And not only that we have these policies and procedures on paper that we're in full compliance with them. And I'd just like to say, are we perfect? Absolutely not, we're not perfect. But if you look at the data, it suggests that we don't have a problem with excess excessive use of force and we don't have a problem with complaints from community members. So I'm a new chief, um, but I've worked in this community for 25 years. 19 of those years, I've worked under the leadership of Chief, um, Chief Ryan, retired Chief Ryan. And under his leadership, we have worked tirelessly to build trust, um, to build strong relationships with community members, to build strong partnerships. Um, and we did that through engagement by working with the community to problem solve. Um, I'm forming, um, Mr. to Mr. Trumbly's point, I'm forming a Chief's Advisory Committee um, that will provide a forum for police and community interaction and discussion. I recognize the value of feedback from our community members and I wanna um, further strengthen those partnerships that we've worked so hard to um, form. So I think in closing, I just wanna say that we have a very good police department and I'm very proud to have spent my career here and to um, have the opportunity to lead it. And I'm asking that I have a chance to lead it. We have work to do and I recognize that and the entire police department recognizes that and we need the community to work with us. Um, I'll say it again, we're very transparent. I have never refused an opportunity to meet with community members or um, an opportunity to listen and I'll continue to do that. Um, the Commonwealth is addressing police reform. We should let the issues with civil service, um, the issues with collective bargaining and the issues with police be worked out at the state level not at our local level in Thank you. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Chief. So yeah. I, I still didn't get uh, the Chief didn't say what her uh, her uh, review board would be made uh, or uh, who would be on it. What what entails her review board? Oh, uh, Chief Flaherty, can you answer that specific question? Who would be on your review board? Absolutely. So our review board would consist of members of the Human Rights Commission, um, a member of our LGBTQ plus Rainbow Commission, um, members um, of our Disability Commission, um, community stakeholders, including um, residents and business owners, um, students with an interest in, um, in maintaining positive relationships with the police department, um, the town council, a member um, of the select board. Um, and right now I'm working on getting those invitation letters out and I hope to have that um, up and running within the next few months. Thank you very much, Chief Flaherty. Mr. Tremble, you have about a minute left. So I, I guess I'm gonna make a, uh, I'll make a comment. Seems to me that the uh, the chief really is taking this pretty seriously, and uh, the makeup of her uh, the uh, review board that she's proposing sounds not that much different than than the uh, the study committee here. So I I think it's probably not a bad thing just to let let her uh, review review board uh, form and 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 let's see how it works. And we can always come back. You know, next year or the year after, and and uh, and uh, establish a, another advisory board if uh, if we think the chief's uh, board is not working very well. But uh, um, I, I'd say we shouldn't uh, in, in, inundate ourselves with too many uh, too many review boards. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Trembley. Um, Jordan Weinstein.
<clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jordan Weinstein, Precinct 21. Um, just uh, to let you know who I am, I am the uh, author of record of Article 6 uh, that we're talking about right now that would set up a uh, town meeting committee to study the efficacy, the possibility of whether or not Ar Arlington could use a civilian review board and have a bit more civilian oversight of its police department. Um, it goes without saying that, uh, first of all, I, I wanted to thank uh, the select board and all of the organizations who have endorsed Article 6 and support it uh, alongside the chief of police, police uh, police's uh, advisory board. There's no reason why both can't coexist. Uh, and once again, I want to emphasize this is a study committee, but it has been endorsed unanimously by the select board. Um, it has been endorsed by the Arlington Human Rights Commission and also by the Envision Arlington Diversity Task Group. Um, I want to uh, uh, express my thanks to the select board for spending so much time in helping actually make an initial stab at this much better than it was originally. It was a much smaller body, uh, but that thanks to the select board's work, um, it has been expanded. And I want to point out that most of the seats uh, that would be participating in this study committee are also part and parcel of the chief's uh, advisory board. Um, I don't see any reason why this, a study committee like this would interfere in any way, shape or form without the uh, with what the chief is doing. But the particular difference I wanna point out between the chief's advisory uh, commission, uh, as I understand it, and what this study committee creates is first, this is a study. Uh, second, it is studying whether there ought to be a body called a civilian review board that is independent of the police department to conduct independent um, and therefore uh, what some might consider more trustworthy uh, 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 examinations and investigations of complaints about our police force. If the police force is doing so well, and I uh, have no reason to, uh, and no data to say it isn't, so I agree with uh, Chief Flaherty, then uh, there should be a welcome mat out for uh, such uh, at least examination into, into this committee. It would be independent of the police department again. Uh, excessive force, I wanna point out, is not the only way to measure one's police force, but uh, temperament and the way uh, that the police interact with the citizens that they're, uh, they're sworn to uh, protect and defend is also important. Uh, I just want to say also that I do support both amendments as friendly amendments offered by Christy Kelleher and Elizabeth Dre and think that both help uh, improve uh, what will be, I'm sure, a very valuable and rewarding and productive uh, study committee. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, William Berkowitz. or global quality management or similar titles to improve an organization. This proposed independent study committee is not exactly that, but I think it is designed and offered in the same spirit and that it should ultimately lead to a better police department. And that's because when members of this committee sit down to discuss and exchange ideas with each other and with the public, the chances are good that through that dialogue and interchange, we will wind up with a stronger APD. So to me, I see this article as very much pro-police, supportive of police services, and of Chief Flaherty's remarks, which I appreciate. Uh, and there's no downside in this uh, study committee, which meaning that the study committee cannot, of course, change police practices. We can only recommend them. If we like them, we can accept them. If we don't, we won't. So there's really nothing to lose, but potentially quite a bit to gain. And for these reasons, I support this article and ask you to vote for its acceptance. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. And that was William Berkowitz. We missed the very first part, Bill. That's why I announced that. Um, Christopher Wilbur. to Police Chief Flaherty that relates to this article, I believe it should be fairly self-explanatory. Dear Chief Flaherty, as a TMM from Precinct 3, I'd like to give you a heads up that I intend to ask you about Article 6, Police Civ Civilian Study Group at the upcoming town meeting. Specifically, I will ask you whether you have polled your officers on their opinions and feelings about the study group idea as proposed in this article. My concern as a TMM is that the study group idea will be pushed by its proponents as something that quote, being only a study can cause no harm. But is this really true? Specifically, I'm wondering how the prospect of this study might affect APD morale if it has not already done so and whether you think morale and trust are issues that should factor into this, quote, only a study context. In theory, I suppose some officers might possibly support the proposal as an opportunity to share and explore ideas that could prove constructive in town police relations going forward. Other officers, I imagine, might see such a study as more likely to become a vehicle for agitators trying to sow division between town and people. That to the degree that it presumes an adversarial relationship between the two sides, it might help instigate the very contentiousness it purports merely to study. If the latter is true, claims that it's only a study should perhaps be challenged. Uh, I feel that uh, discussion of Article, Article 6 should take account of everyone's attitudes and fears an input from rank and file officers, either it directly or indirectly, should not be omitted or excluded. I sent this to Chief Flaherty. She re responded very positively to it. And she said that she was uh, looking into it, into, into polling her officers. So, so I would like to ask her now if she would care to comment on what she found and the, and the moral, mor morale issues I've raised. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Wilbur. Uh, Chief Flaherty, can you answer Mr. Wilbur's um, inquiry? Mr. Wilbur, Julie Flaherty, Chief of Police. Um, the unions understand the climate, and I believe right now they're focusing their energies on um, the state level. Unions across the Commonwealth are working with statewide coalitions to make sure reforms are put in place um, fairly. Um, as far as the warrant article, there are um, many unknowns. And at this point, they haven't commented because they don't know what the recommendations would be. Um, but I, I will say that, that the police department should have input and should have, um, should have a voting member um, on the board. If a doctor or an attorney um, vote for any type of review, they're reviewed by their peers. And it's only fair that um, other doctors and attorneys would be reviewing them. The governor's proposal includes law enforcement professionals as well as civilians um, on the review panel. But I would say that whatever the outcome um, of this article, all the members of the Arlington Police Department will continue to practice fair and impartial policing and can you continue to discuss them, uh, to um, conduct themselves professionally as we always have. Thank you, Chief. Anything further, Mr. Wilbur? No, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Wilbur. Um, <clears throat> Phil Goff. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Phil Goff, Precinct 7. I move to terminate debate on both this article and the amendments before it. Thank you. Very good, Mr. Goff. Thank you very much. We have a motion to terminate debate. Uh, Second. And that's been seconded. The motion to terminate debate on the article and the two amendments before us. We're going to take that vote at this time.
Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. Is that all one vote or? Yeah, one vote. Okay. Because it's on the article and the motions to terminate and the two amendments to terminate debate. So it's one big vote. So it's a motion to terminate debate. Mr. Moderator, Gordon Jamison has a point of order. Uh, what's your point of order, Mr. Jamison? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, my reading of the, um, the vote and uh, Ms. Keller's amendment do not jive. I believe her amendment needs to be corrected so that it's 17 and two and 15 or the, 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 the vote, the vote has um, 17 and two and 15 and she has 15 and two and 13. I'll study that right now while we vote on the terminate debate. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, thank you. And if Mr. Heim can look at that as well. So town meeting members, we have, um, we have a motion to terminate debate. So voting is enabled to terminate debate. Um, so Ms. Wayman, please do raise hands for uh, voting issues. If you can't vote or do anything else, call Ms. Brazil, 781-316-3071. Town meeting members, please go back to the um, voting portal, hit refresh page, and you should get your voting screen, one to yes to terminate debate, two to no to continue the debate. And then hit uh, cast your vote after you've. Mr. Moderator, Roderick Holland yep. and Marion, a few people are raising their hands. Okay, let's start with Roderick, then go to Miriam, then Laurie. Um, I have fixed my problem, but for the longest time, the uh, terminate debate uh, vote was not enabled. Okay. Yep. That's the refresh page button, Roderick. Uh, yeah, I hit that 15 times. Oh, I guess 16 was the magic number. It sure was. Thank you. Ms. King, Miriam King. Yes, I have um, a readout that says error establishing database connection. So hit the refresh page button. I Up at the very I, top. I is, think I did that already. Try that again, because I just had that same issue. Okay, well, how would you vote, Miriam, to terminate the debate? I'm trying again. Oh, I've got it now. Okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, uh, let's take who was left. Oh, Miss Brazil has a vote, I believe. Yes, uh, Julie Brazil, town clerk. I have uh, Diane Mahan, precinct 14's vote on this motion to terminate. Yes. And how would Ms. Vahan vote? Uh, yes, to terminate. Okay. We have six people who have not yet voted. Um, Stephen Ford, Theodore Peluso, Carolyn Sullivan, Leah Broder, Peter Gast, and Laura Tracy. If those four, six people could vote, we'll give you another 10 seconds. Mr. Moderator, Julie is raising her hand again. Okay. Let's see what Julie has to say. Then we're going to close voting afterwards. Julie Brazell, town clerk. Adele Krause, precinct six, votes yes to terminate debate.
We also have Leah Broder as well. Okay. Let's see what Leah has to say. I have voted. My screen shows it's been recorded. I'm not oh. sure if there's a problem. No, I'm showing you have voted. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's probably just a refresh issue on my page. Okay. The two crossed in the ether world. All right, let's see, um, that should terminate. Let's close voting. And 76%, it is a positive vote to terminate debate. We have 182 in the affirmative, 58 in the negative, that's 76%. It's a two thirds vote to terminate, so debate is terminated. Um, to Mr. Jameson's point of order, I see what you mean, Mr. Jameson. Um, Mr. Heim, do you see the issue that Mr. Jameson pointed out? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Uh, moderator, Doug Heim, Town Council, Yes. If I may, just um, for the sake of efficiency, try to uh, correct the amendment. Um, I think it's very clear what its intent is, and unless Ms. Keller has an objection, um, I, I think I can fix it relatively quickly uh, before town meeting. Okay, yes, if you would, then we'll um, just get Ms. Kelleher's thumbs up on that. Okay. So Julie, bring up Ms. Kelleher while Doug tells us how to fix this. So uh, members of town meeting, Ms. Kelleher's motion where it says under section 1A, it should read 15 uh, members, four of whom shall be non-voting ex officio members. Um, and if you refer to the, it's actually probably a little bit easier to refer to the main motion. If you look at the main motion, essentially what uh, we're doing is, um, moving two items from voting members up into the non-voting members category. The chief of police, that's on page 11 of the select board report, and the diversity equity inclusion director or the designee. So all we're doing in this, in this motion, to my understanding, is moving them up from section 1A Roman numeral 2 to section 1A Roman numeral one and changing out the word 15 shall be voting members to 13 shall be voting members and changing the word uh, and number two of whom shall be non-voting members to four of whom shall be non-voting members. So again, uh, Ms. Kelleher's motion to my understanding is simply taking the chief of police and the director of equity and inclusion uh, out of the list of voting members and moving them into ex officio members. Uh, the number of committee members in total shouldn't change, but the number of ex officio neighbor, members should change from two to four and the voting members changes um, from 15 to 13. Unless uh, Ms. Kelleher has a correction to, to my understanding of her motion. Okay, Ms. Kelleher, did you hear uh, Mr. Hines. Yes, Krista Kelleher, Precinct 5, thank you for the correction uh, that you're making to the amendment. I accept it and I appreciate it. Okay, very good. And um, Mr. Foskett will second that. Second. Okay, so we're just moving some people around. Okay, so if town meeting members first, we're going to vote on Ms. Kelleher's amendment. Then we're going to vote on Ms. Dre's amendment. And then depending upon how those two votes go, we'll vote on the uh, main motion of the select board, either as they wrote or as amended. So first we're gonna take a vote on Ms. Kelleher's amendment, changing people around uh, from voting to non-voting and changing the police of chief, chief police to the diversity equity inclusion coordinator. So let's open voting. I'm sorry, John, 
this is Doug Hyman, Town Council. I apologize yeah. for, may I be recognized, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, just maybe I misheard you, but just to be clear, this amendment is changing the chief of police and the director of equity and inclusion, a diversity, equity, and inclusion from voting members to non voting members. Correct. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, all in favor of Ms. Kelleher, is it uh, voting is open for Ms. Kelleher's amendment. If you want to Ms. Kelleher's amendment to the main motion, please vote one for yes. If you don't want it, vote two for no, and then on your voting page, click one for yes, two for no, and then cast your vote. If you are having an issue voting, please raise your hand or fall else fails call Miss um, Brazil. Ms. Brazil has a vote, I believe. Julie Brazil, town clerk. Yes, I have the vote for Adele Krause, precinct six. How does Ms. Krause vote? She votes yes on this amendment. Thank you very much. We have 10 members who have not voted. Um, Lisa Reynolds, Stephen, Stephanie Ford, Weems, Patricia Costa, Jane Howard, Ted Peluso, Claire Johnson, and James DeTulio. If those members would please take a moment and vote. going to give them another 15 seconds to vote. There's three down members who have not voted yet. Okay. Uh, I don't see any members in tech support. I see everybody up. Okay, um, let's close voting on Ms. Kelleher's amendment. Ms. Kelleher's amendment passes by 68% total. We have a vote of 162 in the affirmative and 70, 70 in negative. That amendment passes. I'm going to run through the screens, then we'll vote on Ms. Dre's amendment. So if you'll refresh, Ms. Dre is changing the composition of the task for, of the study committee. Very good. Let's go. Article six, Dre. There you go. Okay, town meeting members, please navigate to your portal page, refresh your page. Um, vote one for yes, two for no, and then click cast your vote. And Miss Wayman will open the raise hand feature in Zoom <laughs> for if you have a voting issue. And Mr. Tulio has his hand raised. Uh, James Tulio, Precinct 12. Mr. Moderator, would it be possible to have, um, oh, yep, that was gonna be my question, just to have the amendment up while we're voting. Right, he had to go through the, um, the screen or two to get there but we are going to try and do that and show you the amendments and the motions while the voting goes on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. 
Mr. Moderator, Julie Brazil has her hand raised. Oh, okay. Let's have what Julie has to say. How does Ms. Krause vote? <laughs> Julie Brazil, town clerk. Yes, Adele Krause, precinct six, votes yes on this amendment. Okay. Getting faster at that, Mr. Kowalski. Okay, we have 16 members who have not yet voted. If you'll please take a moment and vote at this time. Um, John Deist, Nada El Waha, Nuwahi, Nuwahi. Oh gosh, sorry, Nada. Nada El Wahi. Uh, Stephanie Ford Weems, Patricia Costa, Heather Cook, Susan McCabe, Michael Stern, Naomi Greenfield and Ted Peluso. If you guys would please take a second and vote. Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. Susan yes. McCabe has her hand raised. Okay. Hi there, Susan McCabe from Precinct 9. Um, I, I just have a spinning wheel on my voting page um, and a blank in the field where it says your vote has been recorded. Um, so it's not accepting my vote. Okay, so why don't you give this to us right now? Okay, it's a yes. And yes, so Susan McCabe, Precinct 9 will vote yes, Mr. Krowski. And Susan, um, you may wanna just refresh up at the top in the um, Windows yep, address bar. Sure, I've been doing that. I, I may have to reboot or something. Okay, thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay, so if the four, last three people who have not yet voted can please vote, Nada, Stephanie, and Ted. We're gonna give you 10 seconds to do that. As soon as Adam's done with his vote. Oh, he's done, okay. Five seconds left. And okay, let's close voting on Ms. Dre's amendment. Ms. Dre's passes by 62%, 148 in the affirmative, 90 in the negative. Okay, as soon as we're done with that, we're gonna take a vote on the main motion has printed in the select board's report as amended by Ms. Kelleher's amendment and Ms. Dre's amendment. So now I'm gonna take a vote on the main article as amended by those two amendments, both of which were successful. So your voting portal is now open. And town meeting members, please go to the voting portal, hit page refresh, and then you will be on the main motion as amended on article six is printed in the select board's report, one for yes, two for no, and then hit cast your vote. If you're having a voting issue, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom, which Ms. Wayman has opened for us. Uh, we have Ms. Dre has raised her hand. Yes, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Moderator, Elizabeth Dre, Precinct 8, I got kicked out. I would like to record a vote of yes, please. Okay, Ms. Dre. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Preston.
Yes. Ms. Preston? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. I got kicked out also, and I'd like to vote yes. Okay, so you're Joanne Preston, Preston Gate is nine. recording nine, nine, recording a yes vote. Thank you. Thank you. If you got kicked out, just hit the page refresh. It will bring you back. Um, it's just a function of everybody going to the portal and hitting refresh at the same time. It causes a um, kicks you out. It's a database issue. Just hit page refresh and you should get your screen back. Just participate if you have to and get to the voting screen. All right, Susan McCabe. Hi, I'm all set. I did what you said. Um, I got booted out, but I managed to refresh again. I'm all set. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Tosti. Yes, I got kicked out also out of the portal entirely. I'd like to record my vote as no. No, okay. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Julie Brazil, uh, sorry, yep. one moment. Um, while Ms. Brazil does whatever it is she's doing, let's get Susan Stamps. Um, yes, Mr. Moderator, I'm having the same problem. I got kicked out and there was no way to refresh my screen. Okay. I'll, I'll vote yes. Okay, we'll record your vote, Ms. Stamps. Try um, just re reloading it totally. And finally, Mr. Bill Berkowitz. Mr. Moderator, Julie Brazil, uh, town clerk. Yes. I have uh, a vote for Adele Krause, precinct six. And how does Ms. Krause vote? <clears throat> yes. Yes, thank you. Okay, we have 15 members who have not yet voted. If you could Please take your moment, go ahead and vote. And at this time, I'm going to enter the votes for uh, Mr. Leonard. Mr. Leonard votes yes. And Ms. Kropelka votes no. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, I think William Berkowitz is, um, has a question. Yes, Mr. Uh, Berkowitz. Yeah, uh, just want to make sure my vote was recorded. Um, yes. Hold on. I'm showing you have not voted yet, Mr. Berkowitz. Uh, could I, I can't get into the portal right now. Could I be verbally recorded as a yes, please? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. <clears throat> we'll enter you as a yes vote, William Berkowitz. There you go. All right, for the last uh, seven town meeting members, you have um, Peter Young, Paul Marshall, Brian McMurray, Alan Reedy, Asia Kapka, Um, and Ted Peluso have not voted yet. A few people will please take a, a mo moment to vote at this time. And we're gonna give you 15 seconds to do that. Five seconds. And time's up. Okay, let's close voting, Mr. Karolski. The motion as amended passes margin 85%. We have 205 in the affirmative, 36 in the negative. It's a vote and I so declare it. And that ends article six.
brings us to Article 7. We have a bylaw, Article 7 is a bylaw amendment to the Envision Arlington to update their language. As soon as we finish with the screens, we'll go to the next article and at Article 7. Envision Arlington. Submit. Oh, sh yes, it's 9.45, I'm sorry. I don't have the big clock telling me it's 9.30, so I keep forgetting to do the break. Um, let's take a five minute break to give um, our staff and all of you a, five, a few minutes to rest. When we come back, we're gonna take up Article 7. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan, for reminding me. Um, and so it's a five minute break, folks. We'll see you in five minutes. Um, Okay, town meeting members, uh, we're about to restart. There's two um, things that I wanted to remind you of. Um, one is, I should have done this at the beginning of the meeting, but uh, I was reminded by the board, the library board of trustees that Ms. Joyce Radosha has been on the committee on the library board of trustee for 40 years. So we're all gonna give give Joyce a high five there for uh, 40 years of service to the town of the library committee. And I also wanna remind everyone that there's a memorial procession tomorrow at 7.30 um, p.m. or a.m. Mr. Uh, Jap Delane for- um, Mr. Moderator is John Hurd, it's a.m. Okay, it's a.m.? Yep. Okay, there's a, a, and that's right down Mass Ave, Mr. Hurd? Ah, uh, yes, I believe so. It's coming from Hanscom Air Force Base as they drive into West Bar Roxbury. Oh, okay. So tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m., there's a memorial procession for um, Chief Warrant Officer, Second Class Marwak Gabar. If um, all of you who could get out to Massaf while they drive through town, it would really be appreciated by his family. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Okay, so we have first on our list, Mr. Greg Christiana. Greg, you out there? Huh, maybe you thought it was a 15 minute break. Well, the co-chair of the committee is- Hello. Um, Hello. Oh, I, Greg. I, I, yeah. Yep, it just connected. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Greg Christiana, Precinct 15. Uh, Scott Lever and I are the co-chairs of Envision Arlington and we present uh, Article 7 tonight. Uh, this article proposes light editing of the language in the town bylaws related to Envision Arlington to bring the wording of the statements up to date. Uh, we propose replacing the word citizen with the more inclusive term resident and update two of the titles to include commonly used terms, uh, environment and sustainability and diversity, equity and inclusion. This article also updates the name of Vision 2020 to Envision Arlington and the town bylaws to reflect the change uh, in name voted at the 2018 town meeting. Uh, we, pro pro we propose changing the label used to describe the statements going forward. Uh, statements of community values are more descriptive of their true function than using the word goals. Uh, the bylaw would continue to call on town officials to consider these statements when establishing policies. Uh, the term goal is now commonly used to describe something achievable with a specific period of time. Uh, and I hand it over to, to Scott, uh, the other co-chair. So Scott Lever? Yes. So we have to bring Scott forward. Uh, hello, Mr. Ruff. Mr. Ruff. Moderator, John, can you hear yes. me? Yes. Yep. Scott Lever, Precinct 8, co-chair of Envision Arlington. So 
Um, our recommendation is that the statements uh, formally called uh, goals remain relatively fixed. Um, these are the result of years of public input and uh, the use of trained facilitators working with um, Arlington residents. The statements as they are broadly stated are, entire, are, are intended to inspire future work. They've served us very well for 30 years. We don't intend to change those. We believe that they should only be changed with significant public input. To summarize, um, we're proposing minor editing to the, um, to, to the language. Uh, Greg has covered most, most of the, the elements. Just to repeat, um, we're intending to use the term community members and residents and changing two titles to the more commonly used terms, environment and sustainability and diversity, equity and inclusion. And uh, finally, and, and maybe most importantly, uh, we're changing the name of what was formerly called Vision 2020 to Envision Arlington for uh, probably obvious reasons. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Lever. Lever, sorry. Um, John Ellis. John Ellis, Precinct 3, I move to terminate debate. Okay. We have a motion to terminate debate in the article. Oh, and uh, just one, one more thing. Uh, Scott, did you want to mention the uh, administrative change or shall I mention that? Um, it, yeah, go ahead, Greg. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, I apologize for the late notice. Um, uh, we wanted to make an administrative change based on feedback that we got since Monday night, uh, which would, um, uh, this would change, uh, let's see, under, uh, let me just pull it up here, sorry. Uh, under uh, Article 1 of the Town Bylaws, uh, the second sentence, uh, we would like to change that uh, to strike uh, an uh, to our, to replace it with our, like we value our active and compassionate uh, and then striking citizenry and replacing with community members um, and then delivering services and uh, striking in our community and replacing with two residents. Hold on a second. And what was the last one? Is that in that same article one? That's in article one of the town bylaws, correct. So and what is what was the third one? Uh, striking the last three words in our community and replacing with two residents. So uh, what you're proposing is to make an administrative change to the second sentence that it would now read, we value our active and compassionate community members, volunteers and programs delivering services to Residences. Oh, I'm sorry. And continuing to uh, to strike volunteers and programs. You want to strike volunteers and programs as well. So, we value our active and compassionate community members delivering service to residences. Correct. Uh, to residents. Correct. Residents. Did you get that, Miss Brazil? Uh, Ms. Brazil? Yes, I did. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, ma'am. Um, yeah, we can make that change uh, if Mr. Foskett will second it. Second. Okay, so we can make that administrative change. Um, we have a motion. Uh, Mr. Heim has his hand raised. Let's see what Doug has to say. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just want to clarify something just so it's clear on the record. This is a vote of town meeting that we're amending. It's basically a charter for Envision Arlington. It's not an amendment to the town bylaws. Okay, this is Envision Arlington's charter, not the bylaws. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I should clarify. There's, there's, a, there's one section of the bylaw that gets 
sort of updated, but some of the language here is an update to the um, the charter vote. Mm -hmm. And then there's a smaller section that's uh, under Article 15 of the town bylaws. Okay, very good. Thank I you. see that up top. Thank okay. You. We have a motion to terminate debate by Mr. Ellis. Let's take his uh, motion. Second. Thank you, Mr. Foskett. So voting is now enabled, town meeting members. Uh, please navigate to the voting portal. Select one for yes to terminate debate. Select two for no and hit cast your vote. And Ms. Wayman has raised, used the raised hand feature on Zoom if you have a voting issue. And it looks like uh, we don't have anybody in tech support right now. So we're good there. If you're having an issue voting, oh, Ms. Kate Leary has raised her hand. Hi, yeah, it's not um, registering. Your vote? Yeah, yeah, it's um, like just a beach ball, you know. Okay, so how would you vote, Miss? Um, yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. If you have an issue, continue to get back to us. Danuta Forbes has her hand up. Yeah, I'm having the same thing. I think, I don't know if the system is overloaded, but I'm getting, this is my first problem that I've had. Okay. But I vote yes okay. to terminate debate. Okay, it's Danuta Forbes, um, precinct 10. Uh, we have, and Pamela Hallett, Precinct 21. Mr. Moderator, Julie Brazil, Town Clerk. Yes, ma'am. I have a vote for Pam Hallett. Okay. Uh, she votes yes to terminate debate. Okay, Pam also has her hand up. That's probably because she had a voting problem. Okay. <laughs> yep, she put I, it down. I also have a vote for Adele Kraus. Okay, how does Ms. Krause vote? She votes yes to terminate debate. Very good. Okay, Ed Trembley, Ian Alert, Richard Gallagher, Jennifer Seuss have not voted yet. If you guys can take a vote, there's about five of you left. We're gonna give you 15 seconds on the motion to terminate debate. Five and terminating debate and we're terminating voting. So let's close voting. Uh, terminating debate passes by a 96% margin. We have 231 in favor and 10 against. So debate is terminated. run through the screens, then we're gonna take the vote on the main motion as we administratively amended it. Seven. 
And Mr. Klein has a point of order. And voting is enabled. So town meeting members, please navigate to the voting portal. Vote one for yes, two for no. And Mr. cast your vote. Mr. Klein, what's your point of order? Christian Klein, Precinct 10. Uh, just before we take the final vote, if you could read the administrative correction one last time, thank you. Okay, very good. Near the bottom of the um, recommended vote of the, on the board of select, the select boards page under there, it says article one community. The second line will read, we value our active and compassionate community members delivering services to residents. Is that clear, sir? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have um, 67 people who have not voted yet. Please go ahead and log in to the voting page hit refresh your page, one for yes, two for no, and then cast your vote. Mr. Moderator, Julie Brazil, town clerk. Yes, ma'am. I have a vote for Adele Krause. She votes yes for the article. Very good, thank you. And while we're there, let's do Mr. Leonard and Ms. Korpelka. He votes yes. And Ms. Korpelka likewise votes yes. Okay, six people have not voted yet. Paul Schlickman, Carolyn Murphy, Myra Collins, and Ted Peluso has not been active for 31 minutes. So we're just gonna wait on Paul and Myra. We're gonna give Paul and Myra 15 seconds. Like Mara voted and Paul voted. Okay, let's close voting. The Vision Arlington passes 99%. We have in the yes, 242 in the affirmative, three in the negative. It's a vote and I so declare it and that closes article seven. Okay, that brings us to Article 8. Acceptance of legislation, Municipal Afford Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Mr. Hurd, do you wish to speak to the article? Sure, thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Hurd, Select Board Chair. 
Thark was inserted by the select board to enact a new bylaw to create an affordable housing trust fund as developed and recommended by the housing plan implement, implementation committee and finance committee. This article advances the town's goals of combating the housing affordability crisis in Arlington by creating much needed affordable housing units. The select board voted in favor of positive action, 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. We have two amendments. Um, Mr. John Gersh. Mr. Gersh hasn't raised his hand. I'm hoping Mr. Gersh is around to introduce his amendments. Mr. Gersh. There he is. And thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Gersh, Precinct 18. Mr. Moderator, I move to amend the recommended vote of the select board establishing a bylaw for an affordable housing trust fund under article eight as submitted and further mr moderator i move that my motion be divided into three separate amendments for three separate votes please thank you thank you very much second second okay mr gersh right. you wish to speak right. to your article yes thank you yes let me start by saying i support the trust our Director of Planning Jenny Rate has laid out lofty, even aspirational goals for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. I trust her and therefore I support the creation of this trust fund. There's just a couple of details we need to fix to strengthen the original article. So firstly, I'm recommending that the income eligibility threshold be 60% of area median income or AMI as opposed to 80% of AMI for rentals. At 80%, AMI ranges as high as $95,000 for a family of four, and that's not particularly affordable. If we're going to walk the talk of welcoming diversity and inclusion, creating opportunities for lower income residents, then maxing out at 60% is better than 80% of AMI for rentals. And the new and there's a new amendment up tonight uh, for discussion that could raise this threshold up to 100% of AMI, which could open the trust up to funding apartments costing $3,000 a month. And that's the wrong direction. Please support the Gersh Amendment. And secondly, let's please retain some level of local control. I believe that those who approve the spending of town funds should be residents of Arlington, including representatives of local housing organizations. And finally, I'm asking you to restrict the use of the trust fund to uses other than supporting developers seeking a state law chapter B comprehensive permit. 40B developers who gain this status are given a free pass to ignore almost all of our wetland conservation and other bylaws such as height, setbacks and open space. They may cannibalize our scarce industrial areas. Um, and which are key to reducing the 94% town tax burden on residential properties. You feel this in your tax bill. And the units can revert to market rate in what is called expiring use. Furthermore, they will take 20% in profit right off the top and sometimes considerably more. Our state inspector general Gregory Sullivan has stated that 40B developers are routinely able to profit above and beyond what is allowed by law to the detriment of taxpayers, municipalities, and local efforts to produce affordable housing. Those are his words. 40B developers build primarily luxury market rate units and we do not need to give them our trust fund dollars as profit. We should keep this money in Arlington for affordability that cannot expire via a 40B exception. We can achieve planning director rates stated vision for the creation of affordable housing handsomely 
by funding our housing corporation and housing authority, rehabilitating existing structures and so forth. The planning director's goal is to be able to respond quickly to opportunities that arise, often smaller properties. 40B developments can be the exact opposite, slow, large, and complex, big enough to wipe out the trust fund they have access to traditional funding methods. For example, at 20 Westminster, the housing corporation used a million dollars in CDBG and CPA funds, affordable, not controversial, and at 60% of AMI, I might add, the HCA standard. 40B developments such as the Mugar parcel are often contentious and divisive. And while 40B has been on the books for 50 years, Massachusetts remains 47th out of 50 among the states in the production of affordable housing. We have an incredibly rare opportunity here for a pure affordability play. Don't tell me this can't be done. 40B is not the Mugar parcel, they be contentious and ugly. There are plenty of ways to use these dollars to their maximum potential other than 40B. Please support the creation of the Arlington Affordable Housing Trust Fund only as amended by the Gersh Amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gersh. Uh, Mr. Foskett has a point of order. Uh, yes, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I think I may have jumped the gun on the um, seconding the motion before. Does Mr. Gersh have, does he expect th votes on three separate parts or is it just one amendment? He's asking us to divide the question into three separate amendments. Um, has he or I, I, I'm not clear. Yes, that's what he is, he's requesting. Three separate votes, one on each, one, two, and three. That's what I seconded. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, the next is uh, an amendment by Karen Kelleher. Yes, Ms. Kelleher. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Karen Kelleher, Precinct 5, and a member of the Housing Plan Implementation Committee. I would like to make a motion to amend the proposed new bylaw um, to amend the purpose section to modify the language that is referred to um, for the definition of affordable housing. You, know, you can see the text of the amendment on the screen. The motion is to replace the purpose section. The change is really just in changing the words affordable housing as defined in the zoning bylaw to the language you see on the screen, preservation and creation of community housing in the town of Arlington, as such term is defined in section two of Mass General Law, chapter 44B, the Community Preservation Act. Um, Second. Thank you, Mr. Foskett. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Gersh's amendment identified a uh, potential um, confusion that might result from the language of the original bylaw as proposed. It referred to an 80% of area median income limit, but when one referred to the zoning bylaw, there's some language there that is somewhat confusing that Mr. Gersh includes in his amendment, uh, which includes the 60% for rental housing and 80% of area median income for uh, homeownership. I'd like to propose an alternative way to clarify that that maximizes the flexibility of the trust. Um, my amendment uh, would essentially refer to the Community Preservation Act or the CPA, which is a flexible definition which already governs certain town investments in affordable housing made by the Community Preservation Act Committee, including the one Mr. Gersh referred to uh, and the Housing Corporation of Arlington property on Westminster Avenue. That definition um, is, on, is not shown in the amendment, but thank you very much for putting up the Community Preservation Act language. Community housing is the term used in that law. 
and it is defined as low and moderate income housing for individuals and families, including low or moderate income senior housing. And Mr. Gersh is correct that this definition is a little more flexible than the definition he's proposing. And it would allow the trust if it wanted to, to use funds to create housing that goes up as high as 100% of area median income. It doesn't in any way require the trust to ever do that, but it gives it the flexibility to do it should it want to. That flexibility currently exists um, for CPA funds as well. But as Mr. Gersh pointed out, those funds have typically been used to subsidize lower income units. I have, um, I'm personally likely to strongly prefer placing a high priority on serving lower income households in Arlington's affordable housing strategies. However, I strongly urge this body to maintain as much flexibility as possible in the bylaw that governs this trust. I say that as someone who has spent um, about 20, more than 20 years developing and financing dozens of affordable housing projects. The vast majority of them include at least 50% affordable housing, and the vast majority of those units have been at or below 60% of area median income, and very often with um, a requirement that some be at 30 or 50% of area median income. So I have no difference with Mr. Gersh and his hope that our use of this trust will drive production of housing that's affordable to a wide range of people who really are not served here. And that might include some slightly higher income people, though it's not my, uh, it's not my intent that we focus our efforts there. However, in all of those transactions that I've worked on, I'm uh, well aware that developing affordable housing is incredibly complex and difficult. If this trust fund is successful, we will be using it to cause the creation and preservation of a wide range of units at a wide range of income levels with many subsidy sources. The vast majority of affordable housing transactions include six, seven, sometimes more than 10 different sources. Those different sources typically are state and federal funds, sometimes even private funds that include different regulatory requirements and the transactions are incredibly complex. Flexible funding that can be used um, to fund different things in the same transaction is very, very valuable to be able to bring to the table. I've seen this happen many, many different ways. I'm gonna give you just one example that sort of points to why it might be useful to be able to subsidize housing at a slightly higher rate. I worked on a project, this is quite some time ago in the town of Weston. It was a 40B project. Uh, it was actually a family that had excess land that wanted to develop affordable housing and the town supported it. So in that respect, it was a friendly 40B, though it was opposed by some neighbors. That project included, um, because of the, the context, it had um, 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 six affordable units that were developed without any town subsidy uh, because it was a 40B. And because 40B essentially requires a market rate developer to pay for the cost of affordable housing. And that is what is actually the power of 40B. It produces affordable housing units, which cost a lot to produce without subsidy, sometimes. It is also used by affordable housing developers for other purposes. I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. But in this particular project in Weston, there were excess development fees, uh, excuse me, there were excess development proceeds and it is in fact true that there is a 20%, uh, there is a limit on developer fees in 40B projects. And I'm not gonna get into the uh, issue that Mr. Um, Gersh has raised about that, but there is a limit and it's a real limit and it is typically not problematic. There has not been widespread abuse of that. Notwithstanding that in this project, we had excess fee, uh, funding and we used it to create two moderate income units and some additional funds were required to make that financially feasible. And those funds, they, they didn't happen to come, I don't think from a trust fund, but they came in and subsidized units that were moderate income units that were just a bonus on top of the affordable units that were already structured into that deal. That kind of flexibility is what I hope our trust fund can have. Uh, the definition that I'm proposing is the definition that is accepted and used right now by the Community uh, Preservation Act Committee 
if it can, if it's adequate for them and they can be trusted to have that flexibility as they allocate our affordable housing funds, the trustees of this trust should also have that flexibility. With respect to Mr. Gersh's amendments, um, I've spoken to the first one. I don't have particularly strong feelings on his second amendment, which relates to residency of the trustees. As currently written, the only way that a non-resident could be a trustee of the trust would be if that person were to be a representative of a housing organization working in town. Personally, it doesn't trouble me if the executive director of the Housing Corporation of Arlington, who spends uh, their days working to create affordable housing in Arlington, if they happen to live in Medford, it doesn't trouble me, but uh, I don't have strong feelings about that amendment. I do have strong feelings about his third amendment, which seeks to prevent the trust from investing in properties permitted under Chapter 40B. I know that Arlington has had some very difficult experiences and continues to have difficult experiences with developers proposing 40B projects that don't align with what the, what the town's development uh, desires are. That does happen um, with 40B, but 40B is also used proactively by municipalities and by affordable housing developers to streamline the permitting process. And the Westminster Ave project that Mr. Gersh referred to is actually an example of that. A project like that, uh, which is creating affordable housing using 40B should be eligible for trust support if needed for financial feasibility. Mr. Gersh's amendment would make that not possible. I've worked on a number of friendly 40Bs in many towns throughout the Commonwealth. In addition though, trust funding could give the town leverage to negotiate for more low-income units than 40B itself would require, or to target those units to be affordable to lower-income households in a 40B project proposed by a for-profit developer. So for example, the Myrac uh, property that currently has a 40B proposal. The town, if we had this trust existing, we had significant funds in it, we might be able to use those funds to leverage more affordability in a development that's proceeding. For those reasons, um, I, I oppose Mr. Gersh's third amendment very strongly, and I would urge you not to take tools out of the toolbox before the trust even gets formed. I think the issues Mr. Gersh is raising deserve a longer discussion, um, and the town should be having that discussion in the context of the process by which the trust, if it's created, would develop its action plan. Um, and that would need to go to the select board. Um, and there are gonna be numerous opportunities for public participation in those conversations. And those issues are complex and they deserve a very comprehensive conversation. We shouldn't be taking tools off the table before that happens. Most importantly, I hope you'll vote yes to approve the establishment of the Arlington Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And in doing so, join 115 cities and towns that have created a housing trust fund to proactively advance their own affordable housing agenda, support the diversity of their community and control their own future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Kelleher. Mr. Sanjay Newton. Oh, Mr. Yontar has a point of order. So hold on, Sanjay, we have to hear what team was, uh, Yantar's point of order is first. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Team Orkaya Yantar, Precinct 7. Uh, I think it's highly important that we are all clear about what we're voting on and including the amendments. And what I heard Mr. Foskett say was that uh, Mr. Gersh's amendment is actually three amendments. Uh, and so we have Amendments one, two, and three from Mr. Gersh and a fourth one from Ms. Kelleher. Is that correct? That's correct. When we get to voting, I'll have four separate votes on the amendments. Mr. Because Mr. Gersh's one is diametrically opposed, well, not diametrically, but it, it, it changes the same language, Ms. Kelleher. So you're either going to vote, and I'll explain this all when it gets to the point of voting. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Sanjay. Good evening, Mr. Moderator. Sanjay Newton, Precinct 10. Um, I, I'm speaking this evening to, to urge people to um, 
as Ms. Kelleher mentioned, leave the tools in the toolbox. Um, I, you know, 40B does not have to be a dirty word, right? We can use that tool um, proactively, you know, without a uh, for-profit developer. Uh, there are lots of other ways that, that 40B could be used. Um, you know, removing that possibility is, is um, just foreclosing an opportunity for us to create affordable housing down the road. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Barbara Thornton. Yes, thank you very much. I too am very much in favor of this. Name, name it precinct. Oh, uh, Barbara Thornton, precinct 16. Thank Sorry, you. Mr. Moderator. Yep. Uh, I too uh, rise to speak in very much in favor of this. This is a wonderful opportunity for the town of Arlington to develop a housing trust to get money to, and this board, if the tools are left in the toolbox, uh, can be very flexible about what they can do to help resolve the problems with affordability and housing and housing diversity in Arlington. So please vote yes and please vote no on the Gersh amendments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Annie LaCourt. Annie LaCourte, Precinct 15. Um, I don't think I can make a better speech than Karen did in terms of the general need for this fund and for the reasons to uh, turn down Mr. Gersh's uh, amendments. I do have one quick question. Um, I worked with Al Tosti on the Finance Committee on the language of this amendment. Um, and one of the things that we did was we requested that uh, members of the board or other representatives of both the HCA and the AHA be considered uh, for membership on the board of the trust. And so that's why the phrase was added um, that I think Mr. Gersh is concerned with where um, some of those members uh, or someone in the position to uh, serve as a representative of HCA might not necessarily be a resident of Arlington. So my question is whether Mr. Gersh's intent is to uh, prevent um, a future director of HCA who actually lives in Medford from serving on the trust and, and, and to request of perhaps town council through the moderator, whether or not the language as it stands would um, open us up to having members of the trust who are not residents of the town and not representatives of housing um, organizations like the housing trust and AHA that actually do all their, their work in Arlington. Okay, so Mr. Gersh, does your um, amendment two prevent anybody but Arlington residents from serving in the trust? That is the intention of my uh, article two that we retain that level of local control. Okay, thank you very much. There was nothing in the, uh, that I saw in that other, in the other wording preclude other uh, people than chairs of the local uh, local uh, organizations from uh, from getting a seat on the on the trust board um, okay so um, then you had a question for mr. Heim yes and whether or not the the wording of the article as written versus the amendment okay opens us up to having members of the board of trustees other than representatives of organizations that obviously have a local stake like HCA, residents of other towns on the board. Is that implied by that wording? Are we, do we, have we left a, a, a barn door open here? Mr. Moderator, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Doug Heim, town council. So the wording uh, for folks, uh, can bring up the vote says the voting member shall include a member of the select board designated by the select board and six members appointed by the select board. The voting members shall be residents or representatives of local housing organizations who may have relevant experience in the field of real estate, etc. So the base criteria for the six members appointed by the, the six voting members appointed by the select board are that they either have to be residents or that they have to be representatives of local housing organizations. 
uh, I don't see a way for somebody who's not a representative of a local housing organization, uh, who's a non-resident, to be on the board under this criteria. That answers Ms. LaCourt's question. I believe it does. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank I you, want sir. to strongly urge everyone. Sorry. No, I just said thank you, sir. I was thanking Doug. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I want to strongly urge everyone to vote down all of Mr. Grish's amendments. I don't think that it's necessary in terms of the makeup of the board. And I think his other amendments um, reduce the flexibility of the housing trust and that flexibility is very important. I think what um, Karen was trying to say is that um, money is leverage and for any affordable housing project that comes into Arlington, however it arrives, if we have money that we can put on the table we have leverage to um, make that project be what the town of Arlington needs according to the housing plan that the trust will put together. I do urge that you vote for the trust, um, hopefully unamended, uh, except perhaps by Ms. Kelleher's amendment, which I think is correct, um, but uh, vote for the trust nevertheless. We really need this tool. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Very Moderator. Much. Thank you, Mr. Court. Uh, Mr. Tully, you have a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, it, it appears to me that when the, the timer goes away by virtue of the article or a motion being presented on the screen that the timer stops counting. Uh, is, is it possible to keep the timer running while there are other things visible on the screen? It, I think it does count in the background, but I've been using I, my wristwatch I, as I, well. I timed a couple of the last speakers and that would not seem consistent with my, my timing. So just, just an observation. Okay, I'll um, keep an eye on that because it's supposed to run in the background, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Bob Marlin, Robert Marlin. Thank you, Mr. Roderick. Um, I move to terminate debate. Robert Marlin, precinct three. Okay, look, we have a motion to terminate debate in the article. And Mr. Marlin, not all issues before us on the article, including the amendments. Yes, including the amendments. Very good, thank you. So I have a motion to terminate debate on the article and all issues before it, including the amendments. So we're gonna set that up. Mr. Moderator, I second the motion. Thank you very much, Mr. Kaboskett. Okay, so town meeting members, um, Go back to your voting portal. Re hit refresh screen if you have to. And then click one for yes to terminate debate, two to no to keep the debate going, and then hit cast your vote. If you're having a voting issue, Ms. Wayman has brought up the ability to raise hand in Zoom or call Ms. Brazil, 781-316-3071. Ford has a hand raised, Julie. Mr. Ford, are you having a voting issue? I'm new to myself. Sorry about that. Um, I'm having trouble with my portal. I vote no. Very good. We'll enter that vote for you. Thank you. Ford, William. Mr. Weinstein has a point of order. I'm sorry, that uh, was a mistake. Very good, sir.
Mr. Moderator, John Warden has a point of order. Okie doke. Mr. Warden. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, um, my computer uh, kicked me out. So I am speaking on John's computer. I just want to raise a point of order. I have served for 12 years trying to get an affordable housing trust fund. I have certain points I desperately want to make about the trust fund and the- uh, Miss uh, Warden? Yes, I have not been- That's, not, that's not a point of order. You're, you're continuing debate, ma'am. Well, I um, I think debate. Well, if, should if be the, it, well, if, if, if it's not terminate debate's not debatable. If the terminate loses, then you'll get to make your point. Thank you, ma'am. No, he called in all the bad guys. He knew who they were. <laughs> called in all the bad guys. John, come on. Okay, I have 19 people left to vote. If you'll please take a minute to go. Catherine Radville, Stephanie Ford, Weems, Brian Rearig, William Ford voted verbally, Larry Derringer, Samantha Dutra, Carolyn Murphy, Judson Pierce, Patricia Warden. So if you folks, and Del Kraus. Uh, Mr. Moderator, Julie Brazil, town clerk. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Adele Kraus uh, called me. She thought she had voted, but I, I agree she's not showing up on the screen. She does vote yes to terminate debate. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, uh, there are about five people left who have not voted. Pat Warren, Larry Derringer, Priya Sankala, Sankali, Lauren Boyle, and Samantha Dutra. If you folks want to take a minute and go ahead and vote. Mr. Is that a new point of order for John Warden or is that the old one? It's not new. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's close debate. Let's close voting. The motion passes 78%. It's a two thirds vote and I declare it. We have yes, we have 182 in the affirmative and 52 in the negative. So the debate is terminated. And that brings us up to the um, voting. So we have essentially four amendments. We have Mr. Gersh's amendment, number one. As soon as this goes through, Adam will show us what Mr. Gersh's amendments are. We have Mr. Gersh's amendments number one, where he's proposing the 60% area medium income for rentals, 80% for medium income. Then we have his number two, where he has a local residence requirement, and then his number three. Um, and then we also have Ms. Kelleher's amendment number, which also is dealing with the same aspect of section two as Mr. Gersh's amendment that is dealing with 60%. Hers sets out a different defining uh, scheme where she wants to use the uh, Community Preservation Act as her uh, baseline. 
So you would either have to vote for Mr. Kelleher, Mr. Gersh's number one, two, section two amendment or Ms. Kelleher's because they both achieve different things. So first we're going to vote on Mr. Gersh's three amendments, then we'll vote on Ms. Kelleher's. Mr. Ruderman has a point of order. Mr. Ruderman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. Have we in fact voted to divide the question? We, um, because he hadn't introduced it, hadn't been seconded yet, I took it to a um, request of his before it was introduced to consider it as three separate uh, articles. I see, thank you for three the clarification. Separate yeah, he had spoken with me prior to the meeting and um, I told him that I already made that determination because it made sense to do it that way. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so first we're gonna vote on Gersh number one. This is amending section two. So we've enabled voting. So please uh, navigate back to the voting portal, refresh your page, then select one for yes, two for no, and cast your vote. So if you want Mr. Gersh's definition of section two, vote yes. If you don't want his vote, no. And the raise hand feature in Zoom is open if you have any questions about voting. Mr. Moderator, Julie Brazil, town clerk. Yes, Ms. Brazil. I have a vote from Adele Krause voting yes on Gersh one. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I changed, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. She abstains on Gersh one. Okay, so Ms. Ms. Krause is going to abstain on Gersh one. Uh, Ms. And after we enter that, we're gonna take Elaine Crowder's point of order. Ms. Crowder? Yes, Elaine Crowder, Precinct 19. Um, can you please, there are some of us who may not be familiar with the language section two. Can you please restate the, uh, the wording of this so that we know what we're voting on? Right, well, Mr. Mr. Um, we can show it to you right there on your screen. What he's proposing is that instead of 80%, it'd be 60% area medium income for rentals and 80% area medium income for purchases. So he's proposing to add the 60% for rentals and to find 80% as for purchases. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we have uh, 15 people who have not voted yet. If they would please take their moment and then navigate over to their voting portal page, click one for yes, two for no, and then hit cast your vote. And I see Ms. Weber has her, Weber has her hand up. I can't get back into the portal. I don't know what happened. I've been fine all night. Huh. Okay, how would you like to vote on the um, Gersh one um, amendment. Number one, no. No, thank you. So we'll enter that for you. Thanks. Do you need help uh, with the um, tech support? Uh, now I do, yes. Okay, so um, 
Looks like Dennis is volunteering to give you a call. Does he have your phone number, Janice? I think so. I hope my phone's charged here. Wait a second. Okay, he's he's going to yeah. give you a call. Thank you okay, very much. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so the four or five people, uh, four people, Brooks Harrelson, Larry Deringer, Samantha Dutra, um, you haven't voted yet, please do so now because we're going to close voting in 15 seconds. Five seconds left. And okay, let's close voting on the motion to terminate debate. No, wait. We're closing voting on Gersh one. I'm sorry. So. If the motion fails, it got. 28%, so Gersh won, got 66 in the affirmative and 166 negative. That motion fails at 28%. Okay, that closes that and it's gonna bring us to Gersh two. Okay, now we can vote on Mr. Gersh's second proposed amendment where he would like to um, make the voting members shall be residents, including representatives of local housing organizations, etc. So he would want to be the trustees should be residents, keep the control within Arlington as he states. So voting is now open. On Gersh 2, please navigate to the voting portal. Click one, refresh your screen if you have to. Please click one for yes, two for no, and then cast your vote. And if you're having issues, please use Zoom raised hand feature. There's about 18 folks who have not voted yet. Please take your time right now and go ahead and vote. Mr. Moderator, Julie Brazil, Town Clerk. Yes, Ms. Brazil. Adele Kraus abstains on Gersh 2. Oh, very good. We'll enter her abstention. Okay, there are six people who have not voted yet. Patricia Costa, Janice Weaver, oh, Janice voted. Uh, some, Patricia Costa, Samantha Dutra, Nada L. Nui, Adele Kraus, oh, Adele voted already. Larry Deringer and Neva Korbahudik. So if those six people can go ahead and vote at this point, because we're going to give you about 15 seconds. We have five seconds left to go ahead and vote. There's three people left. And okay, time's up. We're going to go ahead and close voting on Kurosh 2. That motion fails, 24%. He received a 56 in the affirmative, 
179 in the negative. And that's a vote and I so declare it. And that ends that article. Now we're going to vote on Mr. Gersh's third proposed amendment. This third proposed amendment seeks to provide that no funds of the trust fund shall be used in connection with any project developed under Mass General Law Chapter 40B. So he wants to add the very last sentence in that is underlined and bolded in front of you. So the voting time is now open. Please navigate to the voting portal. Choose one for yes, two for no, and cast your vote. Julie Brazil. Yes, ma'am. How does Ms. Krause vote? What happened to Julie? Apologies, I was on the phone. Julie oh, Brazil, okay. town clerk. Adele Kraus votes no on Gersh 3. Votes no. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, there are about 20 people who have not voted yet. Please um, go ahead and do so now. Uh, Asia Kapka, Janice Weber, Nada El Nui, Samantha Dutra, Joanne Preston, Makaya Healy, Scott Lever, Patricia Costa, Alam Sadat, and Mona Mandel have not voted yet. Please go ahead, you folks, and uh, give it a shot. Okay, we're gonna give you 15 seconds. Five seconds left to vote. And that's it. Okay, let's close voting on Gersh 3. Motion fails, receives 23% firm to vote. It has 51 in the affirmative, 172 in the negative, and it's a vote and I so declare it. When we run through the screens, then we will take up Ms. Kelleher's vote.
And I'm going to vote on Ms. Kelleher's vote, who would like to amend changing the purpose to allow the definition of affordability to be governed by Mass General Law 44B of the Community Preservation Act. Mr. Moderator, just a point of clarification. Yes, ma'am, sir. I do have a um, Kelleher 1 and a Kelleher 2. Is that correct? No, uh, she only has one. Two was, I think, mislabeled. That was her memorandum telling us all the wonderful things about her article. Okay, so uh, could we consider Kelleher one then the primary vote? Yes. Thank you. So here's what Ms. Kelleher's amendment would look like. If you're in favor of Ms. Kelleher's uh, amendment, please uh, either way, navigate back to the voting portal, refresh if you need to, vote one for yes, two for no, and then click cast your vote. If you're having a voting issue, please uh, navigate back to Zoom and use the raise hand feature. Mr. Moderator, Julie Brazil, town yes, clerk. Okay. Adele, Adele Krause votes yes on the amendment. Okay, we'll add to her vote for her. We have 34 people who have not yet voted. Please do so now, down to 25. We have 17 people who have not voted yet. Samantha Dutra, Zachary Grunko, Mona Mandel, Scott Lever, Lever, Adam Badick, Patricia Costa, Joanne Preston, Carol Ban, Nada El Nuoi, Asia Kapka, uh, uh, Robin Drack. Uh, Robin may be gone. Okay, so those eight or so folks, if you could now vote, I'm going to give you 15 seconds on Ms. Krause's amendment. Ten. And, okay, let's terminate voting. Ms. Kelleher's amendment passes by 76%. It has 170 affirmative, 53 in the negative. It's a vote and I so declare it. As soon as we run through the screens, we're gonna take the main vote on the main motion of the Board of the Select Board as printed in their report and as amended by Ms. Kelleher's amendment. Okay, so we're going to open voting on the main article as amended by Ms. Kelleher's amendment. Number seven. Uh, what are we on? Eight. I'm sorry. You're right. 
hours late. You, uh, Mr. Moderator, would you like me to add a word at the end? I can add a new agenda item that says as amended. Um, if you wish. Or shall we just keep the... Yeah, we can just do it because uh, Ms. Brazil and I both know it's as amended. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, town meeting members, please navigate back to the voting screen. Hit page refresh if you need to. Cast your vote one for the article eight for the affordable housing trust fund as amended by Ms. Kelleher's amendment. If you're in favor of that, please vote one for yes. If you're not, two for no, and then hit cast your vote. If you're having trouble voting, please raise your hand in Zoom. Serena Memon has her hand up. Can you hear me now? I just voted. Oh, you did. Very good, Ms. Memon. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Tosti also has his hand up. It kicked me out again. Please record me as voting yes. Very well, Ms. Tosti, will do. And while you're there, Mr. Um, Kowalski, after you do Mr. Tosti. Do Mr. Leonard, record the vote of yes. And Ms. Kropelka, likewise, recorded a vote of yes. Mr. Moderator, Julie Brazil, town clerk. Yes. Adele Krauss votes yes. Very good. Okay, we have... Um, Six people who have not yet voted, Samantha Dutra, Catherine Radville, Janice Weber, Weber, I'm sorry, Janice, Julian Preston, Carol Bean, Nada El Nuoui, Asia Kapka, and Robin Dreck. Robin's gone. All right, if you guys can vote, we're gonna give you about 15 more seconds. Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. Did you say that Janice Weber Weber did not vote? Um, let me look. Yeah, I see Janice is not voting yet. She says she has. Ah, yeah. can you ask her how she voted? Because we'll, oh, wait a second. She just yeah. popped off. So she has now voted. What am I asking? Okay, you? great. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. All right, thank you, Chris. Oh, that was Andrew, I'm sorry. Okay, let's close voting. The article passes by 94%, 221 in the affirmative, 13 in the negative. It's a vote and I so declare it, and that ends article eight. It's well past the witching hour of 11 o'clock. So if stuff, when the screen's done, um, if anyone has a motion for reconsideration, please raise your point of or do it by raising a point of order as soon as these screens are done. Now, when that's done, we'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn for the evening. So if you have a point of order, get ready to give that as soon as um, we close this article. Okay, Patty Muldoon 
has a point of order, so she may have a motion, notice of reconsideration. We bring up Patty. Yes, Ms. Muldoon. Patricia Muldoon, precinct 20, move to adjourn. Okay, um, thank you very much. Seeing if anyone has a point of a motion for reconsideration. I'm asking them to use the point of order if they do. If we're gonna give another second, if not, we're going to uh, adjourn for the evening. Second. Second, thank you very much, Mr. Foskett. Okay then, thank you very much. We did pretty well tonight. We got through um, a couple big issues and we'll see you on Monday. If you have any questions, please email me and um, have a good evening. Thank you. Oh, Miss Wait, Miss Memon has a point of order. Miss Memon? Yes, Mr. Moderator. I thought uh, we were supposed to possibly start the meeting earlier on the next meeting. Well, that had been raised, but it won't work for um, a number of technical issues okay. if because we're taking people to get start logging on at seven and we're taking nearly an hour to get everybody logged on to start earlier would really cut into all of our um, dinner times. Okay. Yeah, it's just no, not technically you. available, uh, a, able to do so. Thank you. All right. Okay, thanks. And let's see what Mr. Yontar wants to do. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Timor Kaya Yantar, Precinct 7. Is it correct that the amendment that was promised for Article 4 has not been submitted? Not yet. I have not seen it. Uh, wouldn't that make it overdue? I, I, Mr. Heim, Mr. Heim is working with her um, today. And technically 48 hours, I wanted it by today because he's working with her. If I, we get it pretty quick tomorrow, I'll circulate it, but I would definitely want to get it. Mr. Moderator, this is Doug. May I, may I speak for a second? Yes, sir. Thank you for recognizing me, sir. I realize that it's late. Um, we did we did uh, submit one to the moderator. Obviously, he's been quite busy. Uh, oh, okay. And, uh, running a meeting and getting prepared. So one has been submitted to the moderator. Oh, thank you. So I just haven't checked my email, Timor. Okay. I'll get that circulated out tomorrow morning. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Heim. Okay, folks. I'll see you all Monday. Mm -hmm.